Leviticus 24 begins with the Lord giving Moses guidelines for provisions needed for the tabernacle. The people were to provide oil to keep the lights on, bread to be placed before the Lord as an offering, and frankincense, a special gift to the Lord. But in verse 10, the topic shifts to crime and punishment. Listen to what happened. One day, a man who had an Israelite mother and an Egyptian father came out of his tent and got into a fight. This son of an Israelite woman blasphemed the name of the Lord with a curse. So the man was brought to Moses for judgment. They kept the man in custody until the Lord's will in the matter should become clear to them. Blasphemy is attacking someone with words, in this case, God. And the law against blaspheming the Lord was clear. What wasn't clear at this point was the law's application to a foreigner. Those who were of mixed heritage, who came out of Egypt with the Israelites. So they wait on the Lord to pronounce judgment. And he does in verse 14. Take the blasphemer outside the camp and tell all those who heard the curse to lay their hands on his head. Then let the entire community stone him to death. Say to the people of Israel, those who curse their God will be punished for their sin. So that's what the Lord said to the people of Israel. But what's he saying to you and I today through his word? Don't blaspheme the Lord. Don't speak irreverently of his nature, his attributes, or his works. If God required a foreigner, an unbeliever in our terminology today, to be executed for this offense, how much more so one of his own people, you or I? And it was in this context that God established a fundamental principle of his justice. Crimes must be punished. And that's why Jesus is so worthy of our praise. God's justice requires an appropriate payment for our sin. But as the old hymn proclaims, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow.